I think the first time we met Norman was because we'd all got scholarships to go to Yale and someone in London, probably the cultural attaché to the USA, I can't remember, hosted a party, a kind of cocktail party, but I just remember meeting Norman at that party. Compared to the English education system, Rudolph really set the pace and you arrived, you were thrown for a project straight away, it lasted two weeks, you had to submit a fully designed building. Richard and Norman very quickly kind of teamed up as, a, as, as friends, uh, struggling with these, set, these, these projects that were set. But they were interested in each other. I mean, from day one, they were interested in the dialogue. They were like kindred spirits, really. Well, we, we set off um, at Easter, 1962. Um, to visit primarily Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, um, but other buildings in Chicago as well. I can't remember all the detail, but we set off in a very small car owned by Richard and I. And, well, I, I could be wrong about that, but I think it was an hour car. We had a very old Renault. And we just absorbed these houses. We walked around, you know, we sketched. We, it was very, very influential, and we thought they were fantastic. We couldn't stop, we just, you know, can we see one more today? We'd, we'd, we'd get, kind of get up, you know, eight o'clock in the morning and go on and on, till we, till we, and we saw so many. And then we also went to court in, in Chicago, we saw, look at the, all these steel frame buildings, and were very, very impressed by those. It was an incredibly important trip, but, but it was great. It was what you do as students, you know, it was, it was fantastic. We decided to go back to the UK. I think we came back uh, just before Christmas um, to, in 1962, so we must have then started Team 4 very quickly after that. I don't know what date we started Team 4, but it must have been in January 63, I think. And my father, um, who was also an art collector, self-made, he bought paintings from very young artists, uh, primarily to help them. Um, so he, he came from uh, a background of supporting young artists and turned his support to young architects. And uh, he was a very supportive client, didn't question anything. And there were many uh, sketch, sketch plans, first of all. And um, it took quite a long time to arrive at the final plan. And, but for every plan, my father may have had one or two small comments, but it was never negative and it was just just you know it was Norman and Richard's first building it had to be a very good one they knew that it had to be right and they worked at it but we have very bad builders and uh, I mean the, the the story is and it's true that in one side inspection we found that the uh, DPMs had been were simply cardboard painted black to look like a damp proof membrane and so those pedals got the sack and we had to start again. It all took a very long time. Because it was, it was very um, right on the water, on, on the Carrick Rose, which is nearly all National Trust. It's a, it's a bird paradise. It's an area of outstanding natural beauty, et cetera, et cetera. And so we wanted to kind of sink it into the landscape. And I think also the land belonged to my uncle and they were quite sensitive about this. I mean, they were, they were real traditionalists. They would rather have had a wooden hut. Um, so that was another reason we, we tried to reduce it. And um, we didn't get planning permission. Not, we just didn't think about it. And then one day, one of the planning officers was sailing by and noticed it. I don't think I've seen that in our you know, planning committee. <laughs> and we had a letter from them, and uh, they gave us three months to apply for planning permission, which we did in retrospect, and, and we got it. So they were pretty nice about it, really. So it was an idea of trying not to have the creek dotted with houses, you know, each with our private garden. It was, it was trying to be concentration of the built fabric and then allowing the waterfront, they were quite high up, so the waterfront 
could still be free and almost public because it would be um, news for everybody to go down there. Again, we were trying to preserve the site as much as possible of the open space and concentrate the built fabric. So they weren't whims, they were based on a political and philosophical viewpoint. It was very interesting because it was really innovative that you had directors and workers going through the same front door. And um, that you didn't have a factory with a bit of traditional housing stuck on the front to demonstrate administration. It was considered to be all under one roof and the reason for that was for the flexibility. And we became very, very interested in flexibility then. It was all based on this idea that the plan could change at any point, you know, except for the plumbing maybe. So I think that became a important mantra for both of them, for both Norman and Richard afterwards. Norman was a beautiful draftsman in terms of, especially in terms of sketching. He was passionate about reliance controls, definitely. And I think also the house. He was very involved in, in the Radlett house. Very, but um, in, he was, he, reliance controls kind of released a whole lot of um, allowing him to progress his interest in structure. He was always interested in structure and in speed of construction and in the flexibility. It was an interest in each other and in the work and in the personality. And I think, I'm, I mean, it would be interesting to know if, if um, they hadn't both been English, would they both have been friends? I think probably yes. Definitely an interest of souls coming together.